Hey everyone, how's it going? Dustin here. It has been quite a while since I have been live. Oh man, it's been way too long. How are you all doing today? Um, we'll paint for a couple hours, see how I end up feeling. Um, nothing too fancy today, just gonna paint Gamora from Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've got some box art and we're gonna paint her up to match the box art for the most part. If you do me a favor in the chat, let me know how the audio is sounding. I, um, like I said, I haven't, I haven't painted for a while, so my audio levels are something that I need to adjust. Um, so I'm gonna get a paper towel here for brush maintenance. Audio is on point, sir. Thank you, Raimundo. Music's not too loud for the voice. All right. So, what I've got here is I have a Gamora model that I need to adjust my camera just a touch. Anyways, all right, so I have a Gamora model that I have primed. I'm just doing a gray prime. Um, mostly because she's gonna get covered in white and I don't wanna have to try to cover black. Um, I guess if you could, if you wanted to primer black, but then you're gonna have a heck of a time painting the white on her. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start painting her with ash gray, I think. No, I'm not. I'm going to start painting her with stone golem. So all the paints that I'm going to use are going to be army painter. You cannot hear music. Let's see if I can fix that. I think I may have turned the music up. If not, we'll we'll keep playing with it. It's just some background kind of chill music. So, anyways, I've got Stone Golem that I'm going to use, um, and get that all mixed up here on my mixer. And what I'm going to do with that is that's going to be my base quote white, which is really a kind of a dirty, really light gray. Um, all the paints I use are Army Painter, and you should be able to find a conversion chart online if you're using another brand, but I like Army Painter. I have used Army Painter for all my paints for quite some time now. All right, I think that should be pretty well mixed up, so we'll get that on the palette there. and get to painting. So we'll we'll kind of just do an all over messy base coat with this. Um, and not being too careful where we're slapping this down. Um, mostly just avoiding the head and and hair. So make sure you thin your paint out on your wet palette and just go to town. I'm going to paint the whole body white. So how are you all doing? I am recovering myself from a wonderful round with COVID. Um, haven't I've been painting a little bit over the last few days as I've gotten the energy to do so, but this is kind of the first I've felt like streaming in a really long time. Not because of COVID. I've kind of lost the motivation for a little bit to stream. Um, 
wasn't sure what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to do live streams or um, pre-produced content. So I tried both. I don't have the video editing chops to do pre-produced content in a reasonable amount of time. So what I'm contemplating doing is I will let me know if you're all watching this back. Um, um, what I'm contemplating doing is taking the streams and condensing them down into a time lapse video and doing a voiceover with just the important stuff. Um, Ramundo, I. I would like to get back into, and let me know if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, I'd like to get back into streaming more often. I have not streamed a live paint guide via the Fifth Trooper channel, and since my joining Fifth Trooper, I don't think I've streamed on there. But all of my old streams from my old YouTube channel should have been moved over, and you can go back and watch the the live streams I've done on my old channel before I joined Fifth Trooper. They should be under the Jagged Brush playlist. Um, Fifth Trooper and I joined up a few months back, uh, probably almost a year ago. I, I did, and I started doing some pre-produced content with them. Um, and kind of have decided that's just, I don't know, not something I'm super good at. So. All right, while we wait for that white to dry, I am going to grab some Army Painter Gunmetal. And just do the sword blade real quick. So I'm glad you're here if this is the first time you've seen my stuff. Um, Thanks for stopping by. We'll see. We'll see what kind of feedback I get for this and see if I do it more often. If you have questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. I will do my best to try to answer them as I see them. And my brush is dirty. Let me clean that real quick while we wait for paint to dry and I'll answer some questions. I've got some gunk in my brush from the last time I painted. So I'm just using a brush scoop. I think it's Gentastic's bru Drunken Brush Group, and I find this cleans my brushes really well. It gets all the paint, and you can kind of see how it's, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of turning gray in my hand. Yeah, so honestly, I'm not as good as others as cleaning. I take some of this Brush Group. Get my brush wet, swipe, swirl it around in there until I get some chunks on there. And then wet it again and put it in my hand and just swirl in circles. Um, I am the worst on brushes, which is why I use cheaper brushes that tend to work well for me. So I've got the Army Painter brushes. I do have a set of like Windsor Newton 7s. I, I don't use them, um, to be quite honest. And I just swirl it around until I see it's coming out, and then I'll usually wipe it off and do it again. And until I see it's coming out mostly clean. Ideally, you should do this at the end of each paint session. I tend to paint until fairly early in the morning, and I work early in the morning, so last thing I'll usually do is clean my brushes just because I forget. So. Anyways, that's my 
quick and dirty cleaning. So, all right. Make sure I got all of this done. She's still drying, so while we're waiting for parts of her to dry, let's go and figure out what color I want my base tone green to be. Um, for her skin. I think I'm going to go with Green Goblin. Get that mixed up over here. We'll see if I can't get her mostly done up on stream tonight. Let's see how long I feel like streaming for. So, If you're just joining me, thanks for stopping on by. Um, leave a message in the chat, let me know you're here. I'd love to talk with you and, and answer any questions you may have. It's been a long time since I've streamed, um, so I'm glad that you all are joining me for the first time back in literally months of me streaming. All right, so Greedy Goblin, not Greedy Goblin, Goblin Green. Greedy Goblin is the name of a board game I've played, and we're going to get that onto her skin. And probably her hair, because I think, if I recall, on the box art, her hair is green. We'll get that checked out real quick here in a second. Yeah. It's a different shade of green, but we can shade that down with the wash. So this is going to, I'm not going to do any washes on the majority of the model. But if I want to change the tone of a color, I'll probably use a wash here. So like this green hair, I might want to give it a slight blue tint to it. So I'll probably throw a light blue wash on it or maybe darken it with a green wash. So my base coats here are messy. I'm not being too super careful. Just want to make sure that everything's covered. Don't spend a majority of your time on your base coats. What I see a lot of people do is they try to be super careful with their base coats and try to make sure that they don't get their paint anywhere that they don't want it. It's your base coat. Slap paint on, come back later and touch up any areas where you may have messed up. All right, so the white's dry enough that we'll come back in with a second coat of that stone golem. And touch up some of the green areas I got. So this miniature is fairly easy to base coat. She's mostly white and then we'll go back in and put some black on the areas where we will need black. So how's y'all's evening going? Or let me know in the chat what models you're working on if you're working on stuff on your paint desk. Good to hear, Kendall. Thanks for joining. Commander droids. I have not painted those yet. Do you have any tips on motivation? Finding myself struggling to finish some models in my Legion. Um, yeah, motivation. So... It's something I struggle with myself, not necessarily with painting. I can always find the motivation to paint. Um, and when I find lack, what works for me is I play quite a few different miniatures games. And so if I find myself struggling with motivation in one realm, I will switch to painting something else. Um, 
So, like, it's been a bit since I've painted some Star Wars Legion stuff because I kind of lost my motivation to paint that. I've got plenty. Um, I just picked up a Darth Maul and a set of Stop Steps Riders yesterday. Um, so I'll probably probably get those painted up soon. Um, maybe I'll do those up on stream. Um, but as far as the motivation, my best tip is to just sit down and power through it, honestly. Um, and like I said, try out something different. So maybe go learn a new technique that you want to try. So what I'll find is when I'm lacking motivation is I'll check out um, some minis and find something that I'm like, hey, I like how that looks. I want to go try to paint that myself. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to kill the mic for a second while I hit this with my hair dryer to dry it off. Quick little tip if you've not, hair dryers work amazing for drying paint so you don't have to wait as long in between layers. But I think that is a decent job of everything we needed to get painted there. Just all of the white is done. So we'll move on to our black areas. So for the black areas, I'm going to use Necromancer Cloak, which is not a true black but it's um, fairly close to black. So we'll be able to um, mimic black with this. You don't want to use a two true black because you can't go any darker than true black. And so it limits your abilities to do shadows. And then coming up highlights from there is hard. So get that all mixed up. Get that put down. I'm put that over here because I'm going to end up putting some spaceship exterior for my highest white color and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this yeah so I don't sit in silence when I'm not streaming either I I do stream like if I'm just painting to paint I'll usually have like on a show that I like to watch I'll find a YouTube channel that I enjoy even if it's just noise um, something to listen to podcasts. Um, if you don't already, there's a ton of podcasts between the notorious scoundrels and the fifth trooper proper pod podcast. So I'm going to try to be somewhat careful with the black here. Um, and try to apply it just to the areas I want it because we're doing a more focused based coat here, but if I get it on the white, I'm not going to be too concerned. I can come back and touch it up a little bit later. So we're just doing the boots here. So my issue with motivation came in finding the motivation to stream again, not like stream shows, but to stream painting. You notice as I focus, I tend to get quieter. So I'm trying to get some necromancer cloak into a tight area here with a large brush. Paint parties are fun. Um, if you can get some friends together safely, um, or even set up just like a Google Hangout or a Zoom call and just paint with each other. Yeah, I'm going to have to come back and do some touch-up on these legs. I am shaking a lot today. Not sure what's going on. So 
So this model was a gift from a friend of mine for Christmas. Um, Dan with Dan Wolf Games makes a lot of really good terrain for different gaming systems. Um, sent me this as a Christmas gift. And so of course I had to paint it up on stream. So this will be a model for my personal collection. I think it's just about time to retire this brush and get a new one. Grab another one out of my stash. So I'll have to come tighten up some of these areas of the black. Kind of just resigned to that on the legs. I should probably switch to a smaller brush totally. So just painting in the black areas. This, this is the part I dislike the most, which is the same reason that I don't like painting stormtroopers in Legion, is painting the black areas. It um, becomes tedious. I'm going to grab a smaller brush, though, to make it easier. It'll just mean I have to go back into the paint more often, unfortunately. So, she has some black across the back of her knee here. Got lots of little black lines running through all of this. Even more black lines than stormtroopers, which is saying quite a bit. So I'm going to try to do one leg at a time here. I'll finish all of one leg, swap over to the other one. Let's see if that helped the music at all. I just realized I had my desktop turned down. Let's see. I'm trying to see some lines here. The downside to having painted everything white is it makes it harder to see my lines. Let's see. So what stuff are you having a problem getting motivated to paint?
Lots of black lining to do here. So the easiest way to make sure you get these black paint in the lines is to make sure that it's thoroughly thinned and that'll help it flow off your brush into the crevices. And if you end up making your lines a little bit too thick, you can always come back in and touch them up later with the white, like I did there. Let's see. Get some paint in here. All right, I think we got one leg down before we have to go to the other side. All right. So this is going to be a whole lot of time just spent applying black into fine areas of a miniature. It's a necessary evil sometimes. Unfortunately. If you, like I said earlier, if you haven't seen some of my stuff in the past, since I haven't streamed in a while, all of my stuff from my old YouTube channel, which I had my own channel, you can still look it up, but there's nothing posted on there, has been moved over to Fifth Trooper Network. Go to the Jagged Brush Studios playlist, and you'll be able to find every video I have made in the history of my time on YouTube. There are extensive guides for Star Wars Legion on there. Um, the long format live stream type, as well as um, as well as a um, whoops as well as a guide for Luke that's a shorter format. It's the Operative Luke. That's like a traditional paint guide. I like the, um, the live stream stuff because you get to see every step of my treatment of the model. Ended up missing a line on that side. So whereas when I'm doing a um, a shorter format, there's there's steps that I skip. Like I tell you what I've done, but you don't get to see me paint it in each detailed step. So you could, if you wanted to, you could take a black wash and thin it down quite a bit and run it over some of these lines. Um, it would make it go faster, but it's going to muddy up your white, so you're going to do some white cleanup. So you kind of have a trade-off. What do you want to do? Clean up your white to make it more white, or spend the time pin lining black, essentially?
I would rather pin line black than clean up white. Alright, so we got that done, up to the upper body. Let's see... So these couple lines are going to end up being red down the road, so I can paint over them and not have to worry too much about it. The ones on her rib cage. Although painting red over black can be tedious as well, but they're going to be small bits of red, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yes, painting Gamora. Good to see you, Jared. So, I just realized I painted an area I want to be black, or white black, so we'll have to clean that up some. Oh well. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be painting again. Um, still got some recovery stuff, that lingering stuff, feeling tired, um, taste and smell hasn't fully come back yet, but... It just means I can't taste the paint when I stick my brushes in my mouth. Get the black up under her armpit in here. That's the best part, yeah. My favorite flavor of paint is Army Painter. I got a little messy yet again there. We'll have to correct that. We're going to have some, quite a bit of white touch-up to do. But that's okay. We're getting there. We just have the arms left to do. 
Xandru Dress by Games Workshop. You know, people have asked, like, do different paints taste different? And they really do. So, if I were smart, I would have left her arms off. Just due to her pose. But I didn't think about it. So... We'll have to come back in and try to do some touch-up on her upper body in a bit later. Because her chest is a little hard to get to with the sword arms. Especially with how much I'm shaking tonight, which I don't know what's going on there. Let's see, I need to check a reference photo real quick. And clean my brush while I'm working on it. So if you haven't, on the Atomic Mass website, they have um, really cool galleries that you can check out for each miniature. And it'll give you a 360. So if you're trying to do the box art style that I'm trying to do, you can actually rotate the model and see how they painted different parts of the mini. Um, it's super helpful. So, yeah, she has a black line that runs straight down the middle of her back. Which I went a little bit wide with, but hey, whatever. Um, and then she's got little bits of black that run over there. And it comes up around the collar. And then... So she's got all these panel lines on her armor which can be difficult. And the cool thing about it is you can also zoom in on it and get a better view. Okay, I think that'll work for now. Check some armor. All right, so her arms are gonna be fun to do. Yeah, I really should have left her arms off. So if you're painting this model, 
tip, leave her arms off. Assemble her after you're done painting her. Because getting to these arms are proven to be finicky, for sure. The only area I'm trying to be too careful about not getting paint onto is the white. As far as everything else, I can clean up the sword later. That's easy enough. I can clean up nearly everything. The white can be difficult, but I'll have plenty of white cleanup to do anyway, so I just don't want to make massive messes on it. Even if I ended up getting some like black under her green face, it wouldn't be the end of the world. That's an easy cover up as well. I promise this gets more interesting when we're done black lining everything, but she's coming along. I think she's coming along okay. We're not doing too bad for 45 minutes with the work so far. I'm happy. All right, let's spin this reference photo around. So one thing I am having to readjust to is painting on a camera rather than just what's comfortable. It definitely takes some adjustment to paint on a camera. Lots and lots of black lining. Fun stuff. Getting there, we are getting there.
Yeah, so her chest area is going to be really tough to get painted with that sword there. We will do the best we can for sure. But we're getting close to being done with the black lining. That's for sure. So what you hear my clicking is me just looking at the reference photo. If you haven't, one of the easiest ways to figure out how to paint things that you want to match a style on is to just pull up a reference photo. I think I've got that to where as happy as I'm going to be with the white. Let's switch up this music. I don't know if you all can hear it or not. All right, so now that we got the black where we want it, let's go into my stone golem and we'll touch up some of the white areas where I made a boo-boo. So areas where my lines ended up being too thick, where my shakes ended up getting the best of me. So a little secret about me, I actually am a fairly shaky painter. Due to some prior health issues I've had. So I've had to learn techniques to mitigate that. And the best technique I have for managing shakes is not try to manage them, I guess. Like, don't, don't fight too hard against them. The more you fight against them, the more you're going to be attacked by them. So I've just kind of accepted that they're going to happen every once in a while. They're usually unpredictable when I'll get a random jolt in my hands and just resign that I might have to touch stuff up. I 
But the more you try to fight them, the more you subconsciously end up succumbing to them. All right, one leg done. So other than streams, what are some of y'all's favorite shows to watch while you're painting? Like I, I tend to try to turn on some documentaries, something mindless, something I can listen to. And every once in a while, look up when I need an eye break. Um, I really like The Office. Mostly because I've seen all of it. So I can listen to it and know what's going on. So let me know in the chat what some of your favorite things are to watch slash listen to while you're streaming. Or while you're painting, not streaming. Wow. I've never heard of that issue. So kind of like things like anime or like Family Guy. Just touching up white. Black and white are my least favorite colors to paint. So naturally, I had to pick a black and white model to paint as my return to streaming, right? Why is that frost? Don't feel like that. Yeah, so that's another thing I had to learn was to realize where my skill is realistically and understand that I'm not going to be able to paint above my skill level.
Thanks, Frost. Thanks for stopping by, man. Kendall, I, um, yeah, like you, I'll, it all depends on what mood I'm in. Um, so I've got some animes that I've tried to watch. Um, but they, so I'm going to be a complete sacrilegious anime person and say that the animes that I watch have to have American dub, not even subtitles, like they have to be dubbed. Otherwise, I have to pay too much attention to them. Um, I have not watched the Marvel films while painting because I've not seen them all, um, believe it or not. And so what I have done is turned on the ones that I've watched. And every now and again, my son will come in here and sit me with, with me while I paint. And he'll watch one streaming on my phone while I paint at my desk. Because um, I really got into cri Crisis Protocol as a way to introduce him to miniature wargaming. He's, he's going to be 10 in a couple months. And he can grasp crisis protocol. Concentrate here for a second while painting this chest. Yeah, I think that'll have to do on the chest. Yeah, he loves Crisis Protocol, so... He, um, he gets real hooked on the beat-em-up side of the house. And just tries to beat up old dad as we play, but... Do y'all hear any music? Is it coming through? Oops, that was off stream. <laughs> I'm also notorious for accidentally pulling my mini off stream when I'm getting real close to focus. I think I have a couple areas where I missed the black.
All right. Almost done with white cleanup. Almost. Every time I step back and think, okay, I'm done, I see a spot that I need to touch up. I think I've got one spot that I see left. And we're going to call that done. I think with the white, I need to touch up some black. just on the abs. All right, I think we call that done for the black and white. As soon as I widen this line, all right, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that wash that I was talking about earlier in the stream and I'm going to apply it to the hair just to darken it a little bit. And what I'm going to use is Army Painter Green Tone. I don't put my washes on my wet palette because um, they tend to run, run everywhere. So. I'm not going to put it on the skin. I just want to darken the hair tone up a little bit. And doing that now, we'll let it dry while we work on other parts of the mini. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll try to answer them. They don't have to be painting related, just general life questions. I can give bad advice too. Ooh, I remembered I'd missed a spot that I never touched up on the boot. Much better. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So that'll dry up some. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab um let's see dragon red and she's got some red spots on her that we want to definitely make sure we bring out so 
So, it's a pretty simple model as far as colors go. There's not many. I'm almost out of this color. That should be enough for what we need. And if you forget all the colors as you're watching this, I will put a list up in the description after I'm done. All right. So. She has these armbands that are all red. on each side. And I realize I got some green wash on the white. That's an easy fix. But we'll have to come back to that area in just a minute. All right, she's got a couple of bands on her side. So I'm going to use some washes in some very key spots on this mini. To darken the lines in between these bands is going to be one of them. Because that's a trick I've had to learn to use to make up for shakiness is some spot washing. I have taken to using less washes overall, like I don't wash nearly as many minis of my personal collection. Mostly because I feel like I'm, it, it forces me to push my, <clears throat> excuse me, to push myself as a painter. But there's some cheats I'm willing to use. And for this part, I'm just using the, I'm getting my brush with paint on it. And then I'm using the side of my brush to pick out the raised details on her arm. Work smarter, not harder. And I think that makes up most of the black portion, or the, sorry, the red portion. Let's see. I think I could pull this red in here a little bit further. Oops. We'll have to touch up that white a little bit because I boo-booed again. But that's okay. It happens.
My white got a little too thinned out on my palette, so it's running everywhere. I have never tried contest paints. Um, Cause I'm, I'm sponsored by army painter. So I use their product. All right, we are getting there. So while we have that stuff dry, let's get our gold down on our um, on our sword. And I'm going to start with weapon bronze. That'll give us an ability to highlight up to a gold color. But before I do that, I forgot the red on the back of our hands. There we go. All right. So she's got this little round end of the sword. I really like Army Painter Metallics, not just because I'm sponsored by them. Like, I've tried a lot of metallics, and they really do work better than any other metallic that I've had my hands on. Um, if you haven't checked out my... I have a separate Facebook from the Fifth Trooper. And if you haven't checked it out, I use... They have a new metallic set coming out that is colored metallics, like red, green blues and I painted an Iron Man completely with the red metallic and gold and I think it turned out real slick um, I think you're gonna be able to do some really neat stuff with some of their their new metallic colors Yeah, so any paint's a tool, right? Any Anything is. Um, we'll come back and touch up the blade if I need to. But as I was saying, any paint's a tool. There's no magic in a bottle. I know, like, people like, we like to joke around that, like, oh, like, Dark Tone washes or, you know, other brands' washes of similar color are like liquid skill. But you still have to know how to apply them. 
and you know, still have to know how to control where they go and make them behave the way that you want them to. Because if you don't, you just end up with a pooled mess. So what I'm doing here is just touching up my blade with the gunmetal. Touching up a spot on the collar where my green skin tone had gone over. And then I realized on the hands, there's a spot where I missed putting black on. Or a necromancer cloak. But what some people don't realize about, like like the army painter washes the colored ones is you can use them much like contrast paint. They're not perfect, but they definitely work and they can, um, add some tone and definition to some areas. There's just a couple of areas of this white I'm not super happy with, so. I keep just being drawn back to this area here where my lines were not as neat as they should have been. Okay. I think I picked up most of them. But anyone who thought that any paint is going to be essentially set it and forget it is really setting themselves up for failure. The best way to practice painting is to do a little bit every day. So I've been doing this for 12 years now. Um, and I am by far not where I wanted to be in 12 years, but I'm by much better than I was 12 years ago. All right. I think it is time to pull down some dark tone. And shade those red areas. So I put it on, dry my brush off, and then pull some of that off. So I'm just using a fine tip brush to apply the wash so that I can really control where it goes. Because I don't want to muddy up my white areas. But we want to add some definition to that red.
If you're just joining us, thanks for coming on by. It's been fun having you on board. All right, we will let those dry. And touch up a couple areas of white where I boo-booed. Okay. Put that back up here. All right, so next up on the white is gonna be to grab Spaceship Exterior, which is kind of the next closest thing to white. Um, there's equivalents in other ranges, but I think I'm running out of this too. I need to do a paint order. And then we're going to hit a lot of the upturn areas with this on the white. Still using my fine brush and we're going to thin this out a little bit. And what this will do is this will brighten up some of those areas. So just keep in mind where do you think your sunlight would hit? It's definitely up here on the arm. So we're applying our highlights now. And we're gonna be pretty generous with this highlight because we're gonna do one more white highlight and we're gonna add in some matte white some pure white to this and this spaceship exterior dries darker than it appears when it goes on so don't be afraid to push this highlight pretty far down but be careful you don't mess up any of your black areas But don't be afraid, like I said, to push this highlight to some, like, 90 degree areas. I don't do a whole lot of edge highlighting. It's not my style. But you could edge highlight with this if you wanted. And don't be afraid to experiment. What's the worst you have to do? Put more paint on?
Feel free to ask your questions if you got any. Let me know what you're talking. How's your day been? Anything new, fun? Did you all have a good Christmas? What do you got planned for New Year's? Hopefully y'all are staying safe and healthy out there. We might actually finish up this mini tonight live on stream. That would be nice. All right. Wicked allergies, huh? Those are terrible. I have them myself, which was how I figured out I had COVID. So um, I thought I had allergies, had some scratchiness in my throat. I'm a mental health therapist during my day job. So I went to work on Thursday a couple weeks ago. Towards the end of the day, I started feeling scratchy. I don't work Friday at that job. So Friday, I had a little bit of a cough. Um, but again, I just chalked it up to allergies. Saturday, I spiked 102 fever and realized that's not allergies. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing about 50-50 matte white with spaceship exterior. And this is going to be probably my brightest highlight that I'm going to go on here. Um, I don't want to push it too far. But I definitely want to bring some. So we're going to go with the most upturned areas for this. We'll see how it looks when it dries. I may go with some pure white in a couple areas. Make sure to use the white to pick out some differential colors and some, make some natural panel line shadows. Awesome. A good traditional bowl of ramen is great. So I'm just thinking of where would my sunlight hit on this model and applying white to all those areas. Yeah, I saw that they were releasing that too. Um, I don't have it. It's really expensive. Um, quite outside the budget I set for that game. I do have the game. But it looks really cool. All right, 
I think I will go into some just pure white for some very touch highlights up top. Really try to draw attention up to the top of the model. But be real sparing with this pure white highlight. It can be delivered on real quick. Yeah, he that dragon does look gigantic. All right, I think I think that's plenty of highlights for now. Yeah, I, I'm not either. It's really, it is pricey. Um, but it's a lot of miniature. For what you're getting price-wise. Alright, I was just touching up some black there. Alright, so... I'm going to take my Mars red color. I'll show you it here in a second. Mars red, and that's going to be my highlight for the reds. I'm not going to do more than one highlight on them. They're so small that nobody's going to notice more than one highlight. So... Light pressure. Try not to lose all that definition we added with the wash. You may have to go over it a couple of times, but I'm not going to do more than one color. Light pressure. It's better to have to go over it again than to push that paint down into an area you didn't want it. This is going to be the fun part. Yeah. All right. Last two. Light pressure. All right. We are getting there, gentlemen and ladies. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch up my blue. Or not touch up, highlight my blue. So what I tend to do when I highlight, or not blue, black, touch up, highlight my black. What I tend to do when I um, highlight black is I don't use gray colors. I don't like it. I tend to mix in a little bit of a blue, so like a griffin blue, with my base tone black. And I use that to highlight up. Um, just because I like the way it looks.
Again, if you're new to the stream, thanks for stopping on by. We're glad to have you with Fifth Trooper and Jagged Brush Studios. I'm hoping to make this more frequent. So if there's stuff you would like to see painted live on stream, let me know. Um, I have quite a few miniatures games. I can't promise that I'll have your favorite one. I do have... What would you all say to painting one of these on stream? Is that something you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments. Do it. <laughs> I have two of them, so one for me and one's a gift for a friend. I don't know what I'll do with mine. I don't play Rebels, so. All right, so what I'm doing now is I've did about a 50-50 mix of the black to the blue. And we're going to do some decently broad highlighting with this. Yeah, I wanted the Luke Mini because I like the pose and I like the Mini. I do play Legion, but I don't have Rebels. Well, I have some Rebels, but I'm getting rid of them. So there's a couple Luke minis now. You've got the one that comes in the core set. You've got the operative Luke, which is the ROTJ Luke. And then now we've got this one. Yeah, so there's a th there's one that came in the core set, which is the Empire Strikes Back version. There is the operative Luke that came out that is the Return of the Jedi version, or the, and then you've got this special edition Luke. Yeah, there's one in the core set. You could probably track, if you just wanted the mini, you could probably track one down. Um, like, I've got several. This is the other loop. Um, well, I thought I had him handy, but I don't. So we're just highlighting our blacks here. We'll probably do two total passes of highlights on black. All right, so I'm going to mix in a little bit more of that Griffin Blue. And we're going to do some very selective highlights with this. So thin it out pretty well. And then you don't want to do too much of this one, otherwise it'll start making your mini look blue. So very selective. But the blue to me just adds a little bit of 
visual interest. Get your fingers. Uh, I may take it just a touch higher with just some pure of Griffin Blue. On a couple of spots, very select spots. And I realized I missed a highlight. There we go. Okay. We are just about ready to get on with the face here in a minute. Before we do that, let me highlight my gold. I'm going to take some bright gold. And get that out here on the palette. And just add some highlights to the sword areas. Nothing too fancy. I do have some of the Elder Scrolls game. Um, I have a box of... Let's see, the Storm Cloaks and the Imperials to paint. So maybe I'll throw them in there. I don't have any of the Fallout minis. I have painted one. I painted an NCR Ranger for Evan on the podcast. All right. And then for the last metallic highlight there, I'm going to use some plate, uh, some Shining Silver. For the sword and that'll be our last metallic and then we'll be onto the skin i always save my skin stuff for last all right so on to our skin tone thinking for a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get her eyes put in. So I'm going to take some Necromancer Cloak. And I always do the eyes first when it comes to the face. You by far don't have to do eyes on this scale of miniature. I just like doing it. Trying to get this paint good and thinned out. And with a really fine brush, I'm going to go in and paint the eye socket black. If I make it larger than necessary, that's fine for right now. In fact, it's going to look terrible until it doesn't look terrible anymore. So paint it bigger than you think it will be. Need to be. 
And then next I'm going to go into my spaceship exterior. This isn't going to take very long for that, that necromancer cloak to dry. I'm going to go into my spaceship exterior, get a little fine amount on my brush, and I'm going to paint the whites of the eye in. And my white was way too watered down there. So, wet brush, pull it out, and we will get... You don't want this paint to be too watered down. Let's try that again. How's... Yep. And I overdid it on the bottom, so I'm going to come back in with my black. And touch up the bottom of that eye on that side. I may do that whole eye again. That whole... Her right eye. Not happy with it. Alright, so black. Let it dry for a minute. I'm happy with the other side. For the most part. Let's see if I can give you a close-up of what she looks like right now while we wait for that paint to dry. All right, so that should be dry enough. So back into our spaceship exterior. It's better-ish. Just cleaning up the outside of the eye. And now that I've got my whites in where I want it, I'm just going to take and pull a straight line down through to make pupils. All right. And then I'm going to come back in with my goblin green. And I'm going to cut the eyes back into the size that I want them. It's easier to cut them back into the size you want them than it is to try to make them the size you want them to begin with. There we go. All right. So the unique thing about Gamora is that she has some kind of flesh tone under her eyes. So we'll come back in. We're going to add that in a little bit later. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our goblin green and we're going to add in some necrotic, necrotic flesh in increments for our highlights. 
Necrotic Fesh is not a color I use super often. But the reason I don't use white is white tends to... You lose your, um, your saturation of the color. Whereas if you use a lighter tone of the color that you're using, it keeps that interest. So take some of this Goblin Green. Probably a two to one Goblin Green to Necrotic Flesh for my first one. And this is where a wet palette really comes in handy, is I can make a gradient right on my palette. And we will get onto the forehead here. Let's see if I can get some better lighting for this for you. We'll get the nose with this. This is a pretty broad highlight for the first step. On the cheek. Above the lips. And the other cheek. All right. So grab some more of that necrotic flesh. And now we're probably half and half. And you can do as many highlights as you want here. Just make sure your flesh highlights are thin so they blend smoothly. And a smaller area on the forehead down the bridge of the nose and then I'm gonna grab some pure necrotic flesh just to really hit the tip of that nose and tone it down to just a touch on the forehead. All right. So for her cheeks, I'm going to grab some elven flesh. We don't need very much at all. If you spend any extra amount of time anywhere on your mini, it would be the face I would recommend. And so I'm gonna grab some of that 50-50 mix and mix in some Alvin flesh. thinned it out just a touch too far. And we're just hitting the upper cheekbones with this. And then I'm gonna grab some pure Alvin flesh and just do right in the center of each of those areas. And I'm going to blend it in with some of this so that I can smooth the edge out some. Just so it's not such a contrast of color. And 
and some pure necrotic flesh for the nose again. All right. Now, one thing I did when I was doing this is the hair right here. I got some paint on it, so let's touch that back up again. And I'm going to take some of this deep red. And just because I don't want to get paint out in blue. And make a purple. And that's going to be for her lips. And paint her lips with that purple. Got some purple onto my white there. It's okay. Fixable. And then the last thing I'm going to do is try to put some black eyebrows on. Let me look at this picture close up. Let me pull up the reference photo of her face. Never mind. We're going to take some of this necrotic flesh instead of black. And that's going to be our eyebrow color. And I can completely bunk up because I shook. Let me grab some more of that necrotic flesh. Get it mixed up. It's not a color I use very well, very often. So it definitely was not mixed as well as it could have been. So just doing our eyebrows here. All right. So for her hair, I am going to use some of this. I'm going to go a different way of highlighting her hair because I do want to lose some of the contrast for the hair. So I'm going to mix in some of this spaceship exterior with some goblin green. And come in here and pick out some strands of hair. What you can do is kind of get your brush and take off most of the paint and do like a side brush, over brush technique. It's kind of like dry brushing, but not. And so I'm using the side of my brush to pick out highlights. Again, side of my brush there. And then I'm going to mix in just a little bit more white. So it's mostly white this time. And we're going to be, we're going to make some like shiny spot highlights with this.
Still using that side technique. And then what I like to do, if I feel like I've overdone it with um, some of the hair highlights specifically, is I like to come back in with a little bit of my wash, water it down a little bit. So get my green wash again, water it down a little bit and put it back on my hair. And what that'll do is that'll bring back some of that tone while darkening some of the areas without covering up all those highlights we just did. And I'm going to take some pure wash and go underneath here. So let's let that dry. Good night, Kendall. Thanks for coming by. We're going to let that dry while I get a base. Well, before we do our base, let's get our stone. So we're going to need... She's standing on a tactical rock. Let's go with Filthy Cape. We don't need that much out. And paint our rock. Once that paint dries, we'll wash it with a dark tone and then we'll dry brush it. All right, let's set that aside to dry while I grab a base. What base do I want to put her on? I think I'll go, you know what, let's just go with the plain Jane base. One thing about Marvel Crisis Protocol minis is they don't um, have any shortage of bases to pick from. So I'm just sand filing off the nub there. And get some blue tack. Stick that on there. What I've got over here that I'm mixing is some brush on primer. And so we'll get some brush on primer out. And a big fat brush. And just use some brush on primer real quick. All right, we need to get that dry. So I'm gonna cut the mic for a second while I kick on my hair dryer.
All right. So let's grab our big fat brush here, go back into our filthy cape. And I know it doesn't seem like it's doing much to this primer, but I promise it is. And just paint that on there kind of messy like. And I realized when I painted my rock, I got some on the shoe. That's okay. Easy fix. All right. Next up, dark tone wash. On our rock for Gamora, paint it on fairly heavily. Just brush it on everywhere. For the base, we're going to be a little more selective. And I'm going to line it into the cracks. And then pick out some of the larger dots. You don't have to be super neat about this. It's a dirty sidewalk after all. Thanks for stopping, out, stopping by, Chris. All right, let's hit those two things with the dryer. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my one of my dry brushes and I'm going to go into my spaceship exterior and dry brush the space. Really heavy dry brush. And 
If you need to know how to dry brush, there I have a video on Fifth Trooper under my playlist on how to dry brush, specifically a technique. So I do need more spaceship exterior though. Did I put it away? Nope. I put it on the wrong side. So take most of the paint off. Brush in one direction. Brush in another direction. There we go. And clean my brush real quick. We are almost done. I'm going to take a smaller dry brush and go back into that same spaceship exterior. And we will dry brush this rock. So that it matches the sidewalk. So just heavy dry brush on the rock. And then for the rock itself, I'm gonna actually go into a little bit of matte white just to brighten it some. And get most of that off. And just hit some of the extra edges because I want the rock to stand out from the base a little bit. All right. Let's peel her off of my handle. I use hot glue to stick my stuff to my handles. It makes it easier. And I just use paint bottles for handles, so nothing fancy. Let's stick that back down. I use paint bottles, pill bottles, all kinds of things, I should say. If there's a spot on the base that you're not super happy with, you can cover it up with this tactical rock. And then the last thing is I'm going to take some black matte black, pure black, And I'm gonna grab my big fat brush and a little bit of water. And I'm paint my base rim. Too much paint on my brush. Hit that with a hairdryer real quick. hit that with another coat of the black just because I'm using I thinned it down a little too much and so it didn't cover as well and 
And that is all, my friends. Let me see about getting this, getting you some a good shot of this real quick. Here she is. I'd say we did well. As always, you can find photos of this on my Facebook, Jagged Brush Studios. I will have those up here shortly once I get the photos taken. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you hanging out with me. And let me know in the comments what you would like to see for the next paint stream. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Have a good night.